Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and today I'm showing you another collection overview. This time I'm going to show you very sturdy pens, which means this is the collection or my sub-collection of brass fountain pens. I don't have many. Of course, these may, also, may already be many for some collectors, but uh, I have seven brass pens. When I'm talking about brass pens, I'm talking about pens that are made of brass and the brass is showing. Not like a pen that is made of brass and then it has a, a lacquer of some color. Just the pen is made of brass, it may have some coating or not, but you can see the brass actually on the pen. So that's what I'm going to show you today. My seven pens and let's start. So the first pen is a pen from China and it's this one. This is called the Like TN Element Brass. I'm showing the pens in the order from the less expensive to the most expensive one. This one is really, was really inexpensive. It was from China and I'm saying was because I searched eBay and I cannot see it anymore. I can find some Moonman or Majon or something like that, which is similar but with a slight different design. This is an interesting pen. It has really the kind of shape of a Caveco Lilliput and I'll show you one soon. And what you have here is a D-like nib. As you can see, this is a regular one. I think this one is a medium. I don't remember. Yes, medium. It's written there on the feed. And it is a cartridge converter pen and it comes with a converter. It is an interesting pen. It's very, very resistant. Of course, when you drop a pen, doesn't matter if it is plastic or brass, you may damage the nib, but otherwise, if this is kept, this will be very, very um, sturdy. This pen is not really, it's not a, a, a big pen, but it's not a pocket pen. You can write with it, obviously, like this, or you can post it by screwing the cap on the back. So, it is an interesting pen. It has a texture, I'm not sure if I can show it to you, like if it has many... I don't think I can show you, but maybe if you look at my review you can see there are many lines engraved, very small lines engraved on the material that makes it less slippery for people who have problems with that. I usually don't. This pen has no clip. And this is it. An interesting pen, but I cannot find it anymore on eBay. That's where I bought this one. I had this when I had a travel someday. I don't remember where I went. Maybe to Poland. I'm not sure anymore because traveling is so far uh, before COVID. But uh, this pen is really, really sturdy. You will not, uh, you can't break it. So, very nice. The next pen I want to show you is a brass pen, but this one has, as I was saying before, it has a coating to give it this vintage feel, but it's not like a coating. Let's imagine the Waterman Karen. The Waterman Karen is made of brass, but it is coated with uh, paint or with a material that give it, give, gives it color, the section is plastic and so on. So this is really a brass pen, just with this coating that I don't like that much, but that's how it is. This is a pen BBS. This pen BBS is apparently very similar to a Namizu pen that I don't have. You can see there on top pen BBS, and this is the pen BBS 350. 
uh, it is still available in other finishes made of aluminium with some uh, anodizing with some colors but this metal version disappeared very soon it is advertised on eBay as copper but it's not copper it is brass and you can still find it but when you choose the color copper which is actually brass it will say sold out so you cannot find this one anymore I bought it very soon after it was released so I was lucky about that this is this, uh, this one has the pen BBS typical nib kind of number six this is a fine nib and has that turned upwards tip not a food nib it has a converter and you screw this you can post the pen but it becomes too long and too back heavy if I let the pen go it stays there but I need to force it a little bit down I prefer to use it like this you can post it just by putting there you don't have to screw so this one has the number six pen bbs nib and the other one has a number five the like and you can see the nib difference maybe i'll show them the nib the nibs of them all in the end maybe it's better so pen bbs 350 in brass the next one so these two are from China. The next one is from Japan. And the pen from Japan is this little thing. Just to let you know, I didn't clean any of these pens, so I didn't polish. And they are they they have some patina, which happens with brass and with some other materials. This is the by the way, this has no clip. This is the the Traveler's Notebook in brass. Uh, and it is a pocket pen to be carried with the Traveler's Notebook and it has some features which are interesting it has this hole there that you can put some string and carry it in a chain or in a something like that and it has a clip this is the only pen that has the clip built in but the clip can be removed you just need to unscrew this top part like this and you can send the clip away and then you can close it again and you have a clipless pen so all these seven pens some don't have any clip some have optional clips and this one that has a fixed one it, it can be optional of course, just to, to let you see, I didn't make the review of this one yet, I think. At least I didn't do when I recorded it, not sure when I post the video. You can see it has a little opening there where the clip comes out. But it will not dry the nib because you will have this rubber O-ring to close the to close it so you have that little opening but that opening is not really uh, it's not a real opening to the the inside of the cap so let me just put this back so this is fun because oops this can be a clipless pen or not as you prefer and now that's where I am too clumsy to do this the right way first time but I think it's done so this loop is aligned with the clip like this and it says somewhere there it is more visible when it is polished it says travelers company made in Japan and it is a pocket pen and it is a pocket pen in the real sense a pocket pen is made in Japan which means the cap is really big the barrel 
or the visible part of the barrel is really small, although the barrel is longer than this, and then you take this out and you post it just by pressing. So this one doesn't um, sc doesn't screw to cap or to post. It's like this. Many Japanese pens, the old style pocket pen, they the barrel would be the, just that little bullet shaped rounded part. This one has a longer uh, barrel until here. The typical Japanese pocket pen, you wouldn't screw it here, but this one has the section there. So this one is also a cartridge pen. I didn't try a converter, but I think only a Caveco short converter would fit. And this one has a small number 5 Traveler's Company fine nib. And this one is really well tuned. This was a gift from my sister-in-law and it was very fun to to have. I I really enjoy this this pen. I used it quite a lot yet, but now it's out of ink. But it is a fun pen. So this one is this is a short pen, but if you post it, it will become a really big pen. It is large but it is well balanced. So this is really really a good homage in the same concept of a typical Japanese pocket pen which is different from the European, let's call them like this, pocket pens. And just to talk about the European pocket pens let's go with one of the last four which are four Caveco pens. One is the Caveco Lilliput and Caveco Lilliput is very comparable with the Traveler's Notebook but the difference is that the barrel is long, or at least the part of the barrel that is visible, just to make the same kind of comparison, that is visible below the cap or outside the cap is quite long. You can screw this on the back and you'll have this full-sized pen. Let me just do the same with the Traveler's Notebook brass fountain pen and you'll see that the Traveler's Notebook is even longer. The sections are about the same size, the nibs are of the same size, both are cartridge pens. These Caveco exist in several uh, variations. This is the brass, really put the brass in the wave. It has logo of Caveco on top and it says really put here. Maybe you, you won't be able to see that because it is not clean. But this is the wave pattern. There is one that is uh, simple, it is smooth uh, brass. I have here, so this one screws to post. I have here another Caveco pen made of brass and this is Caveco Brass Sport. I love Caveco Sport. This one has some weight. All of them, all of them have some weight to them. Brass is heavy, so it says Caveco Brass Sport Germany. And this one has the the other kind of. This is the typical Caveco shape, which has again a big cap, more similar with the Japanese pocket pens, but Unlike most Japanese pocket pens, you have to unscrew the cap to post, to, to take the cap off and not just to pull it. And there you have barrel made of brass, brass section, and you have a number 5 nib, the same nib that you'll find on the Lilliput. These will take cartridge or converter inside. Only the short Caveco cartridges will fit. Again, this is a short pen, but when posted it becomes a full-size pen. The next one is a very interesting pen that I like a lot, but I prefer the steel version. I don't know why, it's not better, it's not less or more heavy, but I like it. Um, which is the 
Caveco Supra in Brass. This one has a clip that is optional, you buy it separately to put on the pen if you want. The same happens for the Cavex port, you'll have a, a, a clip that will fit, and the same for the Lilliput, you'll have a, an optional clip that may fit or not as you want. So, and when I think about it, I didn't try, but maybe I could fit a Cavex port clip on this pen. Not that's really important to try, but maybe that can be done. The next, uh, so the, the, the pen that I was talking about was the Caveco Supra. You have here Caveco written there. This is a very interesting pen. It is actually almost the same pen as the Lilliput, but bigger. And this pen is bigger. I have a review so you can see it. This one unscrews to write with, or you can unscrew here and post it and it becomes a very long pen, like this. If you don't like it to have that long, you may write with it like this, or it has this additional part there that you can screw and screw, take it away, take the extra cartridge that was inside, you, post, you unscrew this like this, and then you can post the pen to write with. This pen will be almost the same size as the Lilliput in length, but it will be wider and the nib is bigger, is a number 6. Like this, it will fit one cartridge or one short, one short international car cartridge or one short uh, Caveco converter. If you put the middle part on the pen, it will become a full-sized pen and you can have here inside two cartridges or a full size converter. So let me just put the pen back. And this is really a very nice pocket pen because you can have a big nib and you can decide if you want to have it as a pocket pen that you put take this part away and you'll get a short pen or if you prefer to have a longer pen and you'll have the, that section, maybe it's not for uh, the everyday carry, like in your trousers pocket, but I think this gives it some flexibility. The final pen of this group is another Caveco pen, and this is the Caveco Special in Brass. This one also has a, car, uh, a clip that is optional, it has the logo of Caveco, there, this one has a, this is the most, um, this one has more detail, details, I would, I would say. But it has something that is kind of strange, and it happened right away, is that the section, this ink is not good, it developed some mold or nasty stuff there, so this pen is now clogged because of the ink and I'll need to clean it, I just didn't do it yet, but I'll do it. But what I wanted to show you is that usually the, the cap, let me take the cap out, that will screw and unscrew, the cap will um, fit on the barrel. But in this case, because they wanted to have this part flush with the barrel, so the same diameter, they couldn't do that. And they decided, or they, they decided to put the threads on the section. So the section is actually a middle part that screws on the barrel and screws on the cap. So if you tight it uh, in the kind of the, let's call it the wrong way, you when you unscrew the pen, sometimes you bring the cap and the section for one side and the barrel to the other. That may happen. So they included a, an O-ring there between the section and the barrel to allow you to screw it a little bit more and to have a, an extra grip so when you cap the pen and when you uncap you will take off the cap and not the barrel. So this is the Caveco Special, which remembers us, or it remembers me, of a pencil, because it has all these 
six, eight, sorry, eight facets, and it is an interesting pen like this. It, eight facets, it reminds me really of a pencil, it is long, it, this one allows to have a full-size international cartridge or a full-size uh, converter and it becomes a very long pen. I don't really find it interesting because it becomes very heavy. Let's see if I if I uh, get my fingers a little loose, it will go there. And also the the cap doesn't screw aligned with the facets, it goes in the middle, so it's not really a fault, it's more annoying the part that you can unscrew the cap and take the section out. But this is also a very interesting pen, also heavy, also big and nice. This one has a number 5 nib. Let me just show them all like this, uncapped. I will post the ones that I will say that are made to be posted. I would consider the Delike not to be a posted pen. I will align them by the end of the section. I hope this will make sense for you like this. I want it to fit it all, maybe I can't. This Japanese pen is really large when it is posted. The Lilliput is meant to be posted because, like this, is really small. It has a number 5 nib and it becomes this size. This is the Kavex port, obviously meant to be posted. It has to unscrew to, to uncap, but then it just you just push the cap to post, the same nib as the Lilliput. Then you have the Supra in the full-size version, which I would say it's not meant to be posted. And you, say, you see, like this, it is about the same size as the Lilliput, but girthier. Or if you prefer not to use it in a full-size mode, you take this middle section away, you, and you screw the barrel, Again, you screw the cap like this, and then you'll see that it is almost the same size as the, the Lilliput, just girthier. So, pocket, pocket or full size pen. For me, this is the most interesting pen of the group. However, I like to collect these ones, and I find the Traveler's Notebook a very nice pen. Then I have the Kavec special brass, which has these threads to cap, to post, but I think it's, it doesn't need to be posted because it's big. It has, again, the number 5 nib. So, you have, you have number 5 nibs in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of these pens. You have number 6 nibs in 2 of them. And they are the pen BBS and the Kavec nibs. Two nice nibs, the Kavec nib is a little wider. So, I think this is all I had to show you. I will leave links below to my reviews of these pens, at least the ones that I made reviews, of course, and links for where you can buy the pens if they are available. I don't think these two are anymore, but for the others I will try to leave links. So. This is it. I hope you enjoyed my brass pens collection. Of course, they have this thing that will take up some patina. They may, the patina may not be very regular. You may see that the pen is quite shiny, but the section is very dull, so you may not like it. But if you want to have a perfectly shiny pen, you can just polish every day, if you prefer. You can do that, no problem. Another thing that you need to notice, when you use these kind of pens, you have a, a brass smell in your fingers. They will smell like metal, like if you have been handling some coins. But that's what it takes to have 
nice brass pens. So, I hope you like this collection of review. There are a lot more in this channel if you want to, to check. And I hope to meet you here soon again for another video. Bye.